How much mechanical advantage is in a voodoo hitch? My bet is none. What happened? <laughs> There's your numbers. Some circles refer to this as the voodoo hitch. It's historically known as a transport hitch. It's a way to tension a rope without any moving parts. All I need is three carabiners or maybe two carabiners in a tree. And then I can pull tension in this system and it'll stay. And I think it'll even stay until the knot breaks. This is where I would have started. This, this is the my anchor side. And then I take the rope to the other side of wherever I want to tension it to. And I need to attach a carabiner midline somewhere. I'm using a clove hitch. It could be a directional eight, could be an alpine butterfly. The trick is I need to put the carabiner here. Then I'm going to keep running down through to whatever I'm going around the other side. This could be a tree. This could be a sling around a tree on a carabiner, but I'm going to go through that carabiner. Then I'm going to come back up to this carabiner. And this is, this is a tricky part. Now I need to attach this third carabiner and I want these to align right about here. So if I'm going to take and I'm going to put a clove hitch, anyway, I'm looking for that. And then I'm going to reach through this carabiner and I'm going to grab a biter rope. And that's what I'm going to clip this to. So I kind of nailed it. Another reason why I like clove hitches, if I didn't do that right, I can adjust this easier. So that's the setup. So two carabiners like this. Now the tensioning part, and this is where the, we're going to try to solve this argument of if I pull here, you're going to see this bite kind of move around, is whether or not this is creating mechanical advantage. And the thing with mechanical advantage, we're going to try to figure out how to measure this, is my input force versus my output force. And this is creating tension. This is where I'm pulling, I'm pulling and tension. And it maintains it. See, and then when I let go, it stays. So no this is grab, here. No, move, no moving parts. The rope doesn't cross over itself anywhere. If I really want to put some tension in this, I can pull a vector force on this and then pull these ropes like this. So this is my progress capture. This is my mechanical advantage. This is my progress capture. Mechanical advantage, progress capture. Old sailing days, they call this swigging. So releasing it can be kind of a um, conundrum. If you get enough tension in here, sometimes this carabiner just doesn't want to move like that. It looks easy now, but if I really load this system, it won't be that easy. So the key is, is to find out of these three ropes, one of them goes in the opposite direction than the other. And you can see that happening. So this one's stationary and these two are moving. So I have found that when I apply, when I want a tension, if I grab these two and I go in the opposite directions, I can get a lot more tension. That's the same thing I'll do is I'll grab these and go in the loose direction. And that's where I can break this system down. Let's see how much tension you can create with right, just the carabiners. Try not to pull your bench over, you know? So that's your mechanical advantages. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's about all I can get on a bad shoulder. Your peak was 2.2? So I'm actually adding mechanical advantage. Remember I said these lines need to go in opposite directions. So this one's I got to pull this way, and this one I'm pulling this way. So now when I pull on the tail of this, it's going to want to pull these two devices together, which is pulling those two ropes in the direction that I want. Hold on, slack. Okay. You peaked out at 3.5, but you've got, you know, 1.6. So this is what I say, That's adding impressive. mechanical advantage into the Voodoo Hitch, and, and the Voodoo Hitch is doing the progress capture. We're gonna try to solve this with some numbers and science, see what we can come up with. So this thing is very Voodoo-like because to release it, if you don't pull <laughs> the right <laughs> strands, you have to go, because I have to think about what he did, right? He went like this to make it tight, so I wanna go like, that to make it untight. No strand crosses over itself. It is it is very much like magic. Let's see how I'm more bothered by that, I think, than what forces there are. You're all hung up on the forces. I guess we can just get into that. <laughs> so we've replaced all the carabiner locations in the voodoo hitch or transport hitch with a line scale. So we can see all the forces at any point in time, including the end, the load. So this one here represents my hands pulling on the carabiner or the end of the rope. So this is my input. And then we're going to look at all the other ones compared to the output to see what the mechanical advantage is to see if it can be So if we put 100 pounds on this, right. we should get 300 pounds out of... If it was a three to one. Yeah. This, this is what we're going to What do you think out. it is? I... Do you think it's a nothing to one? I think it's... Probably a one-to-one. -one. Here is the conundrum. Do we measure only during the moment of tension or are we gonna measure once there's tension in the system? 
Because that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pull this until this number is stable. And it's just like, well, mechanical advantage only exists when something's moving. There is nothing really moving in this system, but there are moving parts. Wait, wow, okay. One way to try to identify what's the mechanical advantage. On a three to one, if I pull three feet of rope, there's a measurable distance. On a three to one, that should be one foot of movement, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So that's be another way that we could try to analyze this. Yes, I touched point five. Oh, what are you? What are you? <laughs> no, yeah. Go back, go back, keep going. No. Keep going. How much you put in, willing to put on this wager? <laughs> Uh, all the doge. I'm willing to put all of my Bitcoin <laughs> in on this experiment. <laughs> That's not fair. Everything. You don't have anything. No, I peak to point five. Yeah. I got one to one. Peak, yeah. peak, 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 peak. <laughs> Close enough to one. Why does this... Let the games begin. Hold on. Okay, so this was the same. This equals this. This... Equals this, equals this, equals this. So let me put my own comment in my own video. <laughs> it's because you don't have pulleys in the system. <laughs> Should we try it with pulleys? It's another thing people are like, oh, it won't work with pulleys. Yeah, it will. So one of the other debates on this is this is this system is based purely on friction. So we do know in mechanical advantage systems <laughs> <Is it? laughs> that friction is not our friend. So if this system is based on friction, in order to work, I don't understand how it could be efficient mechanical advantage because if I put high efficiency pulleys in here and I do the same motions, this this does not does not maintain tension at all. So even so the more efficient I make the mechanical advantage, the, the system doesn't work. So again, this is why I'm confused with saying that this system has any mechanical advantage. The rope is terminated here. Okay. Right, and, uh, and you can see I can kind of draw a circle around to this point. Now where these these pulleys are closer together, my circle's kind of from this point around in here. So the only thing that I can do to make this circle smaller in diameter and maintain equal tension is I need to put more rope distance on one side of the of the loop. So it's the equivalent of like, oh, if I do this, it, this side of the loop got smaller than this side, but it just pulled up the tension. So what's happening here is notice that now I have two strands on this side of the loop, meaning I'm using up twice the material on this side as this side. So the loop got smaller, but it has equal tension. So I'm making the system shorter in length, which means I'm increasing the tension between the two anchor points. And the friction in these is then what maintains and balances it. Without the friction, it won't maintain balance. Yeah, it's not stain. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> There's your numbers. Peak force one. You've got pulleys here. So it is a mechanical advantage. Only when you have high efficient pulleys. Does it hold when you have high efficient pulleys? No. Back it up. Yeah, that, that should not be happening. So this entire thing is built on friction and friction stops your mechanical advantage. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Mechanical advantage is there, but this system has nothing to do with mechanical advantage and everything to do with needing high friction in order to maintain tension. So much friction that it destroys your mechanical advantage, whatever you have. So, yeah, it takes a three to one and turns it into a one to one. Exactly. So the mechanical advantage, like when I tension this system, is through the vector pull. And then I'm going to capture the rope stretch. With your putting, friction. With my friction and putting it into the system. But is this why you have to retension it every time somebody slides across something? I think so. So either either the system is slipping. Um, I think we should rebuild this with some carabiners and brake test it. Now we terminated it here with a figure eight. Right there, the average braking strength of this has been 12 and a half in previous tests. And that's pretty much spot on. Four, five, six. So with slack on that tail, we still have 1.7 in here. So is it load limiting? Vector pull, you can see it moving. And yeah. And now what's my number?
Yeah, a lot less. So if You're I want, losing it every time you do that. If I want this system to maintain more force than this, I need to put something in here that has more friction. More friction! If you were just going to do friction, couldn't you do a different trick? Where this is used, it's fast, simple. I need three carabiners or even two in a tree that if I'm just trying to like send one person across, build this very quickly off of a, from a tree to a tree across some water. If I'm building yeah. a tension diagonal that I want to send gear or people across, boom, I can do this, tension it up, get everybody over and then detension this very easily, break it down and we're, we're off and move. This is two carabiners, very fast, very simple. And it's pretty easy to train people to do it. I mean, Ryan just did it.